Hey everybody, Chris McGraw here. I am putting together this video because a few years ago I was lucky enough to go on a trip to Antarctica. I flew down to Ushuaia from the US, sailed for two days to get to Antarctica, and spent two more days in Antarctica photographing wildlife, hiking around. It was a phenomenal trip. But when I was preparing for that trip, couldn't find a ton of stuff online as far as what I should bring. So I decided to make this video hopefully help you out. Maybe you're going on a similar or the same trip that I did. Um, mine was through a company called Antarctica 21. This isn't sponsored or anything by them. Just wanted to let you know. I know Nat Geo does similar trips. At least there was a boat leaving from the same port. Uh, it was a Nat Geo boat the time that I was leaving. Uh, so let me just break it down. I'm going to talk about different layering options. I'm a big proponent of layering instead of just having like one do it all piece of gear. That way, depending on how I'm exerting myself, I can take some pieces off and let breathe, let some air out, hopefully not be sweating and then getting cold again. Uh, I'll just go in order kind of of how you put things on. First off, uh, synthetic or merino wool underwear was huge for me. And then also I had some thick wool socks. Uh, I tend to run fairly warm, so I didn't have to bundle a ton. Uh, so take all this info and apply it to yourself, right? So if you're generally a colder person, maybe you'll need two pairs of socks. Maybe you'll want a thicker mid-layer. But this is what worked for me as someone who tends to run a little bit warmer. Um, it is cold down in Antarctica. That shouldn't shock anybody. Uh, so you want to be prepared regardless, which is why I have all of these clothing items. But yeah, I had a nice thick wool pair of socks and I didn't wear any other socks underneath or over these. Uh, this was enough for me. The boots kept me pretty warm, but we'll get to boots in a second. So there you go, underwear and socks. Uh, as far as upper body, this is most of this, I think maybe all of this. Yeah, all of this stuff is uh, Patagonia. There are plenty of brands out there that make this kind of clothing, quality, outdoor, synthetic, or merino wool, if that's your thing, uh, clothing. I tend to find that wool makes me itchy, so I stuck with the synthetics. So this right here is a thermal weight capoline base layer. And same with these leggings here, thermal weight capoline. They're polyester. Um, I also brought with me a thermal weight balaclava, and actually I have a kind of a one-piece suit that is uh, the same material. I just found that with the one-piece suit, when you get back on the boat, say so you have to go to the bathroom, it just takes a lot of time to get all these layers off, and if you are wearing that one-piece suit, it's just one more thing to worry about if you have to use the bathroom at all. So I just stuck mostly to the sep separates, even though I did end up buying the one piece. I do like kind of lounging around in that in the winter because that does keep me pretty cozy. So that's my base layers. Moving on from base layers, these are Patagonia Terravia pants. Um, these are just a nice soft shell pant. They are not insulated. I do like that they have a lot of zippers and they have a built-in belt. Um, they make them in a different, a uh, few different weights basically there's a light and then there's these um like i said they're not insulated so if you tend to run cold you'll want to do a few different things you could get insulated shell pants like snow pants that are, have insulation built in um, i like to keep everything separate that way if there's a warmer day i can still wear my shell pants um, so for me i wore these thermals underneath and then i wore these soft shell pants uh, or something similar to them and then I wore my shell pants over it. Uh, there's another option, which is to get a separate mid-layer, something like the Patagonia DAS light pant. That's just an insulated pant, or they used to make um, a garment pair of pants called the Nano Air pants. Those are my absolute favorite pants. They also make the R1 and R2 pant. And I'll talk about the R1 fabric here in a little bit. So if you just need a little more insulation, something like the R1, R2, DAS light, Nano Air pant, is something that you could wear. So that's what I wore while traveling. I really like all the pockets. Like I said, everything zips up nicely. They fit me really, really well. And then on top over this base layer here, I wore a Patagonia R1 half zip hoodie. 
Now they make this without the hood. So if you don't like having a ton of hoods on, as you can see here, a lot of these jackets have hoods. So you're going to be putting on one over another, over another. Um, you can get just like the quarter zip, half zip, uh, that sort of thing without the hood. I like having the hood. I like the half zip. This keeps me pretty dang toasty. So I wore this over my base layer. Sometimes though, this R1 was not enough. As I said before, it gets pretty dang cold in Antarctica. Um, so I had a down sweater hoodie that I could throw on over this R1. I could put both hoods on, no problem. Oh, another thing I was gonna say about this R1 is that when you put this hood over your head, it kind of gets rid of the need for a hat, which is nice, like a beanie. Um, so that way you can just start layering hoods and you don't have to worry about having a beanie on over it. That being said, I did end up bringing a beanie for a time that I didn't want the hood up. But yeah, this is a down sweater hoodie. This is 800 fill down and it'll keep you pretty toasty. Um, this is something that I wore a lot on the ship, just walking around. Uh, it wasn't super cold when we left Ushuaia on day one. And I think like halfway through day two, it went from being mild in the 60s and 50s to dropping drastically into freezing temperatures. So having something like this around, definitely helpful. If you're worried about it getting wet, so down does not do well when wet, you can buy something similar that's a synthetic layer. And so instead of having down feathers, it's gonna have synthetic insulation and that will still keep you warm when wet. That being said, when I was there, I did not worry about using down. Uh, it did not get wet at all. Um, and if I like fell off the boat or something, I'd probably be in bigger trouble than, than just uh, wearing down. So I was totally happy wearing down. All of my insulated pieces here are um, made of, of down. So yeah, I didn't worry about that at all. So I threw that over the R1. And those were my mid layers. Um, I was really happy with that. Uh, I also have another down jacket at the end, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but that was not worn underneath my shell. So this is everything that was underneath my hard shell jacket and pants. The pants, speaking of the pants, these are a non-insulated snow pant uh, that Patagonia used to make called the refugitive pant. I have, uh, worn these pants a lot since I bought them. Uh, skiing up north in Michigan during film shoots in the weather. Uh, they kept me dry, they kept me really dry in Antarctica. Um, I have nothing but good things to say about these pants. Even when I was in Iceland and I was on a glacier and it was just like downpouring, these pants kept me totally dry. So those were the pants that I wore over everything. Um, like I said, if you get a little bit colder, you might wanna opt for an insulated shell pant. This is the exact jacket that I brought with me to Antarctica. It's a lighter weight Gore-Tex jacket. Um, you're going to hear about Gore-Tex a lot when you're doing any kind of research and, and quite a bit in this video too. These pants are made out of Gore-Tex and this jacket is made from Gore-Tex. Um, and so are my gloves, which we'll get to in a minute. Yeah, so this is a three layer Gore-Tex and I'm, I'm very happy with it. This is the Refugitive jacket. Not exactly my color, um, but uh, because I got this on sale, I, you know, beggars can't be choosers. So it's not the color I would have necessarily chosen, but I think it worked out well. Um, the jacket next to it is probably what I would bring today. It's like a heavier duty Gore-Tex three layer um, called the Patagonia Trio Lay. It feels a lot heavier just lifting it up. Um, and that being said, it doesn't pack down as well, but this is a pretty bomb-proof do-it-all jacket. So this is probably what I would end up with today. Uh, again, I'm not like huge into the color, but um, ultimately, unless you really care what the photos uh, turn out with you in them, um, how those photos turn out, the ones that actually have you in them, uh, color isn't a huge deal for me personally. So that's what I would bring. And then finally, there were times on the boat when I was standing around and watching for whales or looking at birds. And when you're not moving, you can get cool really quickly. And so this jacket on the end is a Patagonia Fitzroy down parka. And this is uh, 800 fill down as well. 
it's just huge, right? This has got a ton of insulation. Um, it's a very generous fit. You can throw this over all of these other layers and, um, and it'll keep you nice and toasty. Uh, I would not wear this when you're moving around a lot. Um, I did wear this a few times on mainland Antarctica and started sweating immediately just because of how warm I was. So if you're going to be hiking, moving around a lot, you probably want to leave this in your cabin, but it's great for being on the ship um, and back, just like standing around lounging outside, that sort of a thing where you're not generating a ton of body heat. All right, moving on to gloves. So I have these North Face gloves they are quite the bright green. These are my glove liners. So I was always wearing these under thicker gloves. And so you want them to be pretty tight. They're stretchy. These are made out of Gore-Tex Infinium. They're fairly waterproof. And uh, one thing I like about these gloves is I've used them for running a lot ever since, and I have not had my hands get wet at all. Um, glove liners are a definite must because the thick gloves that I brought to Antarctica, I had to remove them every now and then to take photos. I tend to size up with my outer gloves. I'll throw a clip up here of what those gloves looked like. Looked like. Um, I recently had those ones kind of disintegrate on me, so I tossed them away, but those were North Face as well. Um, Gore-Tex gloves, Gore-Tex Infinium glove liners, plus bigger, thicker, sized up Gore-Tex gloves on the outside. And finally, I had this Patagonia beanie. I wear these all winter long. And this is just something that was kind of nice to have on the plane and on the boat. Uh, didn't necessarily wear it when all the hoods were up because I had enough coverage there. But again, something nice to have. Ski goggles are another nice thing to have. If you can throw them over your glasses or if you're wearing contacts when you're on the Zodiac boats, um, that way water's not constantly getting into your eyes. Finally, let's talk about boots. So a lot of, at least my cruise ship, I'll talk about my cruise ship, they provided the boots for us. And those were muck boot Arctic boots, which are rated from anywhere from 30 degrees down to negative 60. So that's what I wore when I was on land. They washed them for you. Um, and all I needed were the wool socks underneath those and my feet were toasty the entire time. Now, if you are going to be doing some hiking, maybe some glacier travel in Patagonia before or after your trip, you're going to want some hiking boots. The ones that I brought with me are these Zamberlin Vias GTs. These are Gore-Tex boots as well. Um, they've had quite a few miles on them, still got a bunch of dirt stuck in them currently. These are just an incredibly comfortable boot, though they are heavy. Um, most of my hiking these days is done in trail runners, but I liked wearing these on the plane, just keeping them unlaced. They keep my feet um, pretty toasty, which on those overnight long flights can be a problem if you uh, just are wearing tennis shoes. My, at least my my feet tend to get cold and they don't usually get cold in a lot of situations. So um, yeah, these Vias GTs are a wonderful boot. Um, I have had no issues with them thus far. Um, if you're going to be doing anything glacier related with uh, crampons, uh, I would opt for something that could accept a crampon. Um, maybe something like these here, these Scarpas. These also are Gore-Tex. Um, trying to remember the brand name of these and it is escaping me right now but i have used these on glaciers in iceland and i've traveled to new zealand with both of these pairs of boots uh, for different reasons and um yeah i think they're really comfortable boots are interesting because it depends a lot on the fit so make sure that you have a good fitting boot and that's going to be the most important thing uh, both of those boots have Gore-Tex, so they're waterproof as well. Though that does mean once water gets in, it has a heck of a time airing out. So uh, luckily, I have not had an issue with either of those boots getting wet on the inside. Um, that's just some, something that I like to remind people of, especially with trail runners. I have both. My favorite trail running shoes are either the Solomon Speed Crosses or the Hoka Speed Goats. Um, I have no... Gore-Tex Solomons, but I do have 
a pair of Gore-Tex Hoka's. And when you're wearing Gore-Tex shoes, once you get water in them, it's kind of game over. So a lot of the time I will end up wearing the non-Gore-Tex version because at least I know if they do get wet, they will dry out. Yeah, so that is the outfit I brought for outside in Antarctica. Obviously, I brought more clothes than this with me in general, but if I was just going to be relying on one set of gear, this would be it. Um, this set of gear worked for me not only in Antarctica, but in Patagonia, in up north in Michigan. It works for me here in Colorado. Um, and I think something like this can work for a lot of outdoor situations where cold is something you're going to be dealing with. Layering is going to be huge. And that's why I went with all of these options rather than a like one size fits all kind of parka. If you have any questions, comment them down below. I will do my best to answer every single one of the comments. I try to at least as, as long as they're on, on brand. And uh, hit like down below if you like this video, if you found it helpful. If you know somebody going to Antarctica or Iceland or somewhere where there's insane weather, uh, send this to them. Hopefully they can find it helpful as well. And if you could, please hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be making a ton more outdoor gear videos, kind of a little bit of a gearhead. So what I like to do in my free time. So hitting that subscribe button definitely helps out with that. Thank you so much. And I will see you on the next one.